Good day, grade 12s. My name is Karen Mazukere. I'm the author of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. Uh, welcome to lesson number 18. This lesson comes from this particular textbook. I've also written uh, Economics grade 10 and 11. So this is grade 12. I've also published Business Studies grade 11 and 12 for Tawiza Rashoko. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to do uh, a test on business cycles. Now, this test doesn't fully prepare you for the final exam or for a test or anything it simply prepares you for section a so you, we're going to do multiple choice column a and b and give a term or phrase now if you want uh the full package i'm going to link three videos that are going to prepare you for the exam the first video that i'm going to link uh down below is uh exam prep uh business cycles so in this video you're going to be prepared for section b now, how about section C? For section C, uh, I'm going to link a video, uh, essay type questions, paper one, because business cycles uh, forms part of paper one. So I'm going to link that video as well. And the last video that I'm going to link will prepare you for section A and uh, it's multiple choice uh, paper one. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'll see you just now after the intro. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. So should I do the intro or not? No, let me do the intro because during the intro, what I want you to do is I want you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. If you have, then click the like button and yes, help me help others. So thank you so much. See you after the break. As usual, we start with our homework. Number one, the technique of using past or known data uh, to predict the future is known as, uh, we said it's extrapolation in the previous lesson. Number two, uh, the dash represents the, the expected growth rate of a country, given that the resources are fully used. That will be the trend line. Uh, you know what it does. It gives us the general direction in which our economy is heading. Number three, the dash of a business cycle is the difference in the value of total output uh, between the peak and a trough. Uh, that would be the amplitude. Okay, we said also it measures the intensity of a business cycle. All right, then number last, which is for eight marks. So you must always take note of the mark allocation because with the first three questions, you just give the answer. But if you look at number four, you have to discuss and uh, it's four points for two marks that four times two. That's what it means. All right. Discuss the trend line in the forecasting of business cycles. So here you come up with um, four points. First and foremost, you want to tell us what it is. So you could start by saying uh, it shows the general direction in which the economy is heading. You can also talk about it normally being positive sloping. But that doesn't mean it can never be negative sloping. So yeah, you, you just have to come up with four points. Uh, here are some uh, ideas. All right, so let's jump into today's business. So today's business or today's lesson uh, is mainly on, it's, it's actually the test for business cycles. So we have completed business cycles. Let's find out if you understood. All right. Um, and, uh, just like I said in the introduction, uh, take note that you should, uh, what do you call it? You should uh, watch the, um, the exam prep for business cycles and also watch paper one multiple choice. So here we are mainly going to focus on section A because what we're doing here is multiple choice column A and B, give a term or phrase. All right, so let's get going. Uh, so here, that's lesson number 18 from the textbook. All right, number one, like I say in exam prep, when on a multiple choice, I always say, uh, do not look at the options. Try to answer the question without looking at uh, the options. Then once you have the answer in your head, then you check in the options section, then you'll see uh, it's going to sort of confirm the chances that you are wrong after having the answer in your head and then you check the options you find it there they are very slim trust me chances are very very slim i'm not saying it's impossible i'm just saying chances are slim 
right the new economic paradigm is Im embedded in dash policy or policies okay we do, did this one uh right I, i'm having the answer in my head okay let me just do this one that will be demand and supply side we did this one uh, in when we're doing the new economic paradigm actually you saw we did the demand side policy where government tries to stimulate aggregate demand and we did the supply side policy where government tries to also stimulate aggregate supply and we say is the way of thinking where government tries to eliminate uncertainties with regards to the fiscal and the monetary policy and they do it by looking at demand and supply side so that's our answer but i think this is the only one that i'm going to give you like that because the rest what i want to do i want you to come up with an answer in your head and then after that i show you the options after you see the options we sort of discuss maybe each and every one of them uh trying to give you the technique that's the same thing i do with exam prep multiple choice i try to walk you through all the options and show you why other options are wrong okay so supply side is wrong because it's not the only one demand side is wrong because it's not the only one equilibrium doesn't make sense at all so our answer will be b let's move on to number two the distance of the fluctuation okay let's with this one what i'm trying what i'm going to try and do is i'll try to draw sort of a business cycle here uh, of course in the exam you you probably won't have time to do all this and then i'm going to draw a trend line okay as you can see i'm drawing my trend line going upwards because that's normally what happens uh, it's normally positive sloping over a long period of time and um, yeah so for instance this here is a complete cycle from trough to trough or this one here is a complete cycle. If you look at South Africa's uh, previous actual business cycles, they take years. So from there to there, that's years. So over over time, there's going to be a positive uh, a trend line, uh, but not always though. But it's 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 very 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 likely. All right, so let's come back to the question. Now, the distance of the fluctuation, okay. You know, this word means up and down. If something is said to be fluctuating, it's going up and down. So as you can see from this model I, I've drawn here, we see up and we see down, okay. Of uh, a variable from the trend line, okay. So from the trend line, so let me, take a different pen uh, i can go anywhere i want to go but let me go there from the trend line the distance of the fluctuation so let's go and look at the up okay so this is the up and the word fluctuation i say it means up and down right let's look at the down which is here this distance here so from here to here that's precisely what the question is saying uh trend line is measured by the okay what is this red line everyone knows what this red line is let's find the options do you think that red line is moving average moving average makes absolutely no sense do you think the red line is amplitude let me leave it there do you think it's frequency did we ever talk about frequency, uh, you know, when we're doing business cycles? Maybe we could, maybe we did, but uh, like maybe I was explaining something and then I just mentioned the word frequency, just like you'd talk about the word off and like, yeah, it's just to make a sentence, but it's not one of the main things that we could talk about. Uh, do you think that is the length? No, it's not the length. Uh, I'm just giving it away. Obviously, it's the amplitude. I wish the answer was on D uh, because when I skipped B, uh, I made it obvious that the answer is uh, is B. I'll try not to do that uh, in the next slide. All right, the next one says, changes in technology will lead to a dash business cycle. Change in technology. All right, to give you a clue on this one, 
maybe one thing you are expecting in the options is change in technology do you think that's endogenous do you think that's exogenous maybe if those things are not there if that's not part of our responses then you want to also think do you think it's a uh, lead to a supply or a demand let's find out what we have all right do you think change in technology when technology changes do you think that's demand driven or or you think it's supply driven what do you think okay leave out political that's too wrong typical too wrong your answer is either a or b but i want you to think change in technology do you think it will lead to a demand driven business cycle like do you think fluctuations are going to change due to demand or fluctuations are going to be influenced by supply okay if your answer is c then you know what you're talking about okay why am i saying this look uh, think about um uh, let's say uh, these companies that are always innovating and so on they are the ones that come up with the coolest technology and all that and so uh, whenever you see the word demand think about the households think about the consumer whenever you see the word supply think about the producers think about firms okay the next question which period of the business cycle is associated with rising profits and consumption uh, this okay which period first and foremost if any of those responses is not one of the 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 what do you call them one of the phases uh you know uh then the answer finding making it a correct answer will be quite difficult all right let's see let me start from the bottom just to you know spice things up uh do you, trend trend makes absolutely no sense because first and foremost it's not because your answer must be around about recession depression recovery prosperity if it's not this yes it can be peak yes it can be trough uh anything other than this maybe it will be downswing or upswing but these ones here are most likely to be the answer okay so which period of the business cycle is associated with rising profits let's draw a typical business cycle so we have our fluctuations there and we have our trend line so this here is our recession this here is our depression this is our recovery and this is our prosperity uh, do you think when people are losing their jobs do you think that's when profits are rising ah it doesn't make sense do you think depression come on this is worse of course re recovery can make sense but nothing will beat prosperity here anyway that's why we didn't even put recovery because you know but even if it was there it would be correct in a way but it wouldn't be as correct as prosperity that's why we also don't have an upswing because this would be correct Depre okay a downswing is obviously wrong that's why we have it and a peak could work a trough is actually out and then here it's prosperity it can work recovery can depression no recession no so we obviously with multiple choice we try to avoid the, the the ones that could be correct if they were if one of these four was there uh yes you would make it the answer okay so in this case none of those four that i ticked are there amongst the options if anyway if our a b c d was these four like um by these four i mean yes obviously these ones here these four here if these four were there uh, the answer would still be prosperity because uh, that's when you know profits are extremely high anyway okay so we have their prosperity the next question 
indicators which change before okay we did indicators in the last lesson uh okay but the last two lessons uh that's when we did features underpinning forecasting but change before so if something changes before anything happens then that thing is obviously ahead so when something is ahead think about your indicators okay so if your answer is either leading lagging coincident or composite if there is anything other than those four uh, that that one scratch it out instantly now upon having these four let's look at lagging lagging that will be changing after so it's out composite it's uh it's sort of an index right of all the in uh the indicators put together so let's take it out uh coincident at the same time so it's out again leading yes they happened before so our answer is obviously a leading indicator okay next one a technique used for forecasting to predict okay a technique first and foremost you see this word technique uh start anticipating something uh a word that starts with e we've been saying this over and over again so a technique used in forecasting to predict uh the unknown okay when you see this word unknown you see where we're going by using facts or information that is known all right this one is an easy one it isn't if moving average okay i say this starts with e someone would think it's estimation but we never told you about this innovation no our answer is extrapolation during a, an economic recession okay so here we have to show the options but just think about it before we see the options just start thinking uh during this time here this time here a recession okay during that time of a recession what do you think is happening obviously people are losing jobs businesses are closing uh, companies are retrenching and so on so your answer is something which is sort of bad something which no one would like all right let's start from the bottom there is economic prosperity this doesn't make sense at all spending increases how can spending increase when people are losing jobs this doesn't make sense production increases no our answer is obviously uh, unemployment will increase people are losing their jobs during a recession this one is bonus right an approach that advocates that uh, monetary policy should be used to smooth out economic cycles all right uh, what i actually noticed with this one is that i had initially made a mistake actually i i i made a mistake in my textbook because i had a look at this and i'm like wow how did i miss this one when i did the editing and when i sent my book out for editing uh, it wasn't picked that i made a mistake so if you look at this one go and correct it because i saw it when i was making this slide uh, so it helped to be making these slides that's when i realized that no, no 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 i made a mistake okay so an approach that advocates that monetary policy should be used to smooth out economic activity uh, economic cycles all right who uh okay we have the keynesians or keynesian whatever however you pronounce it and the monetarists so which is which here according to the monetary school of thought remember uh, we said um they believe that markets are inherently stable so these guys believe that fluctuations are caused by exogenous factors so Part of the things that uh, cause these fluctuations, according to them, is government intervention. So according to these guys here, they maintain that government should not intervene by whatever way because they are the main reason for these fluctuations. So anything that says M is out, then according to the Keynesians, markets are inherently unstable. It is normal for fluctuations to happen. Uh, they actually maintain that government should interfe uh, interfere by implementing their monetary and fiscal policy. So I've given away the answer already. 
yes it's the keynesian uh but in in my textbook it says it's the monetarist of which it's wrong okay so i'm making the correction there uh, then the next one a fiscal policy that attempts to stimulate economic activity a fiscal policy that attempts to stimulate economic policy uh, activity okay so it has to be a fiscal policy uh, you know we have restrictive and ex uh, expansionary so if you see something which is not that drastic fiscal policy there is nothing like that monetary fiscal policy wow this is just to make you look stupid i don't know if i should use that word all right so one that attempts to stimulate so in other words this thing is done when do you stimulate obviously during a downswing and how do you do this one restrictive when you are being restrictive you increase tax and you decrease government spending on the other hand when you are being expansionary you reduce tax and then you increase government spending do you think when uh okay times tough times like this uh funny enough i'm doing this video in february just because just before the budget speech and uh they there are speculations that the the finance minister is going to do the opposite of what we know right opposite of textbook uh okay but anyway let me come back to this one the economy is going down like it's currently going down due to covid 19 obviously the economy is going down uh, do you think it's the right time for government to increase tax and reduce government spending or is the time for government to reduce tax and make uh you know because we know why this one happens to try and stimulate economic activity because this one will kill it so our answer is basically c because expansionary tries to stimulate activity how because when we reduce tax there's something that we are increasing what is it it's disposable income okay i'll put y because that's the symbol for income disposable income goes up and so if disposable income goes up actually it's a demand side policy if disposable income goes up we as households get more money uh, and then we go and spend that's naturally what we do when we get money we spend it right so our answer there will be c the next one an economic indicator that simply move at the same time okay so this one it takes us back back to leading lagging coincident and composite indicators but which one did we say at the same time it was the composite uh the coincidence sorry uh composite it's the what do you call it uh composite that's an index putting all together lagging it comes after leading it comes before so our answer will be coincident then the next one a severity of cyclical fluctuations in business cycle is uh, indicated by all right um, the word severity here is telling us about something which is how intense how intense is a business, uh, business cycle so what do we use to measure the intensity of a business cycle what is it that we use do we use the length do we use the amplitude do you, we use the trend line do we use what moving average do we use extrapolation the answer is obviously this one here so what is this one here that which measures the intensity that which measures um the the, the gap between the peak and the trough because it is telling us how severe uh, a business cycle is so what is it it's that vertical one come on you know what it is right it is the amplitude the next question exogenous factors such as dash okay so maybe we have to look at uh the options there but exogenous factors are things originating from outside so we, we go to our options and look at something that sounds like this one is coming from outside right uh i think weather patterns is the obvious one here right the next one 
Oh, now we're moving on to column A and B. So with column A and B, uh, basically something that I didn't mention, but I always say it in exam prep. So you can watch my videos on exam prep. But uh, coming back to this one here, uh, when it comes to section A, know your terms, just know terminology. Preparing, part of preparing for section A, you could go to the back of the textbook, go through those words, read the definitions. That way you are preparing for section A because you knowing all those terms from number one to 14, those are economic terms, right? Then you know how to define them. And in column B, we have the description. If we look at what we just finished there, multiple choice, we had a description and then we have options. Those options are economic terms. So know your terminology. So, but the technique that I suggest you use for column A and B is the elimination method. That's what I'm going to use here. So, but, but here's how I also do it. Uh, when I'm doing uh, column A and B, I don't necessarily read new economic paradigm then I, I look for because I feel like it will waste my time because I have to read everything going down. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to read the description, then I come up with the answer in my head, then I simply just go and look for the answer. Okay, so just like this, I'll show you as we do it, right? Exogenous factors influencing business cycles. Just listen to that. Exogenous factors. So these are factors from outside. So here I have to just go and look for something which is coming from outside. So if I find something like weather patterns, yes, I'll put it. If I find like something like uh, maybe uh, monetary policy, okay, fine, it's there. Monetarist approach. Uh, no, 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 that's not it. Monetary policy, if I have found it, yeah, it's from outside, right? Because it is used to deal with fluctuations. Remember what the monetaries say, government should not intervene because they believe that government intervention is one of the reasons for these fluctuations. All right, so with what we have here, our answer will be political shocks because this is coming from outside. Successive periods of fluctuations in economic activity. This is basically business cycles. So what I do, I look for business cycle there or number 10. There we have it. The downward phase of the business cycle. Okay, this one is tricky. The answer can be recession, it can be depression, but it's, it's probably a downswing. So let me see what options we have. Okay, I see depression, I see contraction phase. That will make more sense than depression because if the answer has to be depression, it has to be explained a bit more. So I'm going to give 1.2.5 for uh, C, correct. Right, number D, used to measure trends in the economy. Used to measure trends in the economy. This must be an indicator. Okay, economic indicator, that would be number eight, yes. Uh, stabilizing markets using monetary and fiscal policy. Okay, that is the new economic paradigm, that's number one. A fiscal policy that attempts to dampen. Okay, here, the answer can either be expansionary or restrictive, but a fiscal policy that attempts to dampen economic activity. So it sounds like uh, the economy is sort of, uh, what, uh, it's, it's, it's overheating. Let me put it that way. Okay. Uh, if we look at the other one, the fiscal policy that attempts to stimulate that one is expansionary. So F will go for restrictive and G will go for expansionary. The next one, economic activity is at its lowest. That is where a depression will come. You see, if you had said depression for C, then you would be, you, you see, you would get, but I'm sure if you had said C is depression, when you get to this one, that's when you'd re realize that no, 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 depression actually fits here. Then ov obviously in the exam, you are allowed to cancel and make corrections, right? So that's the good thing. If you made a mistake earlier, 
you can always correct it when you see things are not making sense or you see something which really describes something you thought it wasn't describing all right so h will be uh, depression who believes that markets are inherently stable okay i mentioned this one uh, already uh because whoever believes that believes that fluctuations are caused by exogenous factors so that is actually the monetarist uh illustrates the relationship between unemployment and inflation uh i almost said laffer curve okay that's the phillips curve yes the next one uh the technique of using non come on, i don't know how many times we've done this one that's extrapolation building plans past uh, okay, think about it. Building plans have been passed. It could tell us something about the future. So whatever it is, look, op uh, opinion surveys and job advertisements. Come on, this is an indicator, but what kind? A leading one. The turning point in a business cycle. Okay, we have only two turning points. So this one, if it's one, this one, you are not allowed to get it wrong because there are only two turning points in a business cycle. There is peak and trough. So just by seeing the turning point in a business cycle, if there is no, okay, if peak was not there, yeah, if trough was not there, uh, you'd make it peak because it's the only turning point in the options that's how you do it but anyway it will be wrong anyway but uh, i'm sure they will award you the mark because uh, yeah that question is invalid because it has no answer okay so that's that's part of how you should approach things with column a and b uh it has to th there are only two turning points if the other one is not there then it's 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 a free mark all right, so this one is the only one left. Even if you didn't know the answer to this, you'd get it right. It is a summary of various indicators. We've done this over and over again. It's a composite indicator. All right, then we move on to the section that people hate the most. But look, if you do uh, mu your multiple choice the way I do, I do it, where I answer without looking at the options, then that's the same way you have to do this one. I made a mistake here. I said multiple choice. It's actually give a term or phrase. So I'm sure everything is going to look like that, but it's fine. You know what I mean there. Okay, the recurrent but not periodic pattern of increasing and decreasing economic activity. Okay, this one is another way of defining a business cycle. So the answer is business cycle fail. Right, the lowest point between the end of an economic recession and the start of an economic expansion, that will be a trough. It's a turning point. Then the method of predicting. So this one, your answer is somewhere around forecasting, right? The, the method of predicting the future of a business cycle based on historical data. So historical data is something that is known so uh again it's the same thing we've been talking about over and over again the answer is extrapolation then the next one is not multiple choice like i said is give a term or a phrase sorry for that right a phrase of a business cycle following oh a phase not a phrase a phase of a business cycle following a recession so what comes after a recession uh they what comes there you know what it is in which there are very low levels of economic output mass unemployment and low levels of aggregate income this is a depression okay uh factors that cause fluctuations uh which originate outside exogenous simple uh these economists okay so it's either it's a monetarist or Keynesians. Uh, these economists condemn, so they say government should not intervene. So who says government should not? Uh, we know who it is because the Keynesian says government should. So it's the monetarist. The next one or the last slide. Okay, this one is actually the last one. Uh, give a term or a phrase. Okay. 
measures the intensity okay yes we we use the same but that time we said the word severity ne? yes it it shows how severe okay measures the severity of upswings and downswings in economic activity uh, we said it's amplitude these economists argue that markets are inherently unstable so come on this one is funny because uh it's the opposite of what we did in the previous slide so these ones are the Keynesians because they say markets are naturally unstable you know that and so since they are naturally unstable then something from outside has to intervene and they suggest that government should use their fiscal and monetary policy to smoothen business cycles so yes it's the Keynesians then indicates the general direction in which indexes uh that were used in the business cycle move general direction so uh it's something that does this look you see so it's a trend line because it shows us the direction in which indexes uh that were used in business cycles move okay so it is a trend line obviously then the last question uh the upper point the upper turning point of the business cycle the upper turning point this part here this part here what is this it's called a yes i've written it it's called a peak all right thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel and uh share the video with your friends share with uh your relatives whoever it is that you can share with because i believe we are going to get distinctions Look, this is the Distinction Bound student. I'm Karen Mazokere, and um, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. God bless.